everybody, welcome back to my channel. Run away, train, never coming back. Do you remember that song? You were not born in the 1970-80 era and you weren't like a teenager in the 80s or the 90s. You probably have not, but it was it was called Soul, it was by a group called Soul Asylum and it was called Runaway Train. And it featured all of these like kids, real pictures of these kids that like ran away and it was kind of like a big deal because it, it brought national attention to how many children go missing in the United States and are never heard of again. And so today I woke up and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at a true crime, a real quick video on an important thing that I find on the news. And I was just kind of like, I wasn't really looking for anything in particular. I just wanted to see what was gonna be on the news. And it's the craziest thing I ever found. And I can't wait to tell you about it. Her name is, it's Andrea Michelle Bowman, and she was actually featured on the video Runaway Train by Soul Asylum, and that's the case we're going to talk about today. Her murder was just convicted. It's a cold case that was almost 30 years long. So without further ado, let's get spooky. Andrea Michelle Bowman's pretty special, and the reason why she's pretty special, at least to me, is that she was born June 23rd, 1974. There are not a lot of people with that date, June 23rd, as their birthday, and as weird as it is, it just happens to be my birthday. So for some reason, I feel like this case was meant for me to tell. Let's talk about Andrea Michelle Bowman. She was actually born in New Orleans and she was born as Alexis Miranda Badger. And she was given up for adoption and she was adopted by the Bowmans here in Michigan. She lived most of her life in Hamilton, Michigan, in that area, a couple different neighborhoods, but basically around that area, the Hamilton, Michigan area, I believe she lived near Grand Rapids for a while. She vanished in March, she actually vanished March 11th, 1989. She ha was adopted by a man named Dennis Bowman and his wife, and I believe they ended up adopting another little girl as well. But for some reason, I can't find the wife's name. I'm willing to bet that she is being protected because now she is the estranged ex Mrs. Bowman. So let's let's get into what happened to Andrea because it's very very important. Andrea was going to school and she began to tell the school staff that her adopted father Dennis Bowman was molesting her and she was afraid to go back home and the school basically called the police. They got the police involved and when the police went there Dennis Bowman, he said that Andrea had actually stolen a hundred dollars and had left, which sounds a little suspect to me, I think, but apparently after she reported her adopted father as molesting her, she disappeared. And when questioned, her adopted father, Dennis Bowman, was questioned about it. He, he said that she was rebellious, she had an attitude, and she stole money, and she took off. I, I'm willing to bet that she was kind of rebellious because someone was visiting her bedroom in the middle of the night. And so then it became a cold case. No one heard of Andrea. And what's kind of sad is her adoptive mother would constantly call the police and the police would not have any answers and Andrea Bowman actually 
she received national attention. She was on Oxygen. She was on Inside Edition. And then she made that music video. And what's sad is it was always concluded that Andrea was a runaway. But the truth, the truth was much more heinous. And I'm, I'm very surprised that the police didn't investigate this further because as it turns out, after Andrea supposedly went missing, and I was, I believe that was March 11th, 1989, after she went missing, Dennis Bowman and the, the Bowman family, they picked up and they moved to another place. It was like a trailer park. It was 25 miles away from Grand Rapids and they immediately left. So just out of curiosity, if your child goes missing, would you just like pick up and move and like leave? if you were not guilty of anything? No, you wouldn't. You would stay because that child, if they wanna come back, they're gonna come back to that house that they knew. But I guess for no reason, apparently they couldn't get Mr. Bowman on anything and they just let him go. So here, here is some more interesting things about Mr. Dennis Bowman, AKA scumbag. In 1980, before Andrea went missing, Dennis Bowman was Dennis Bowman was convicted of trying to lure someone to the woods, and the person they were trying to lure went to the like somehow got assaulted or something happened, and there was some lewd behavior, and Dennis Bowman ended up going in front of the court, and he made a deal with the courts, and he was convicted of second degree sexual assault and I don't know how he got to have an adopted daughter with that on his criminal past but that was there and he was he had that on his past. Dennis Bowman has been living here in Michigan and in 2019 he was arrested for the murder and the rape of one Kathleen Doyle, who was 25 years of age in 1980. And I guess he raped her and he murdered her and disposed of her body. And they could not find out who did this. And because of how DNA and science is progressing, they were able to link his DNA to Kathleen Doyle. And Kathleen Doyle was married to, it, it said at the time like it was a Navy pilot, but then after, in 2019, it said he was in the Army. So I don't know what the truth is about that, but he was some kind of a serviceman. And I believe for the actual court date, Kathleen Doyle's husband couldn't make it to the court, which I find kind of weird. I think maybe he just wanted to not be like, maybe it was just too much, but he said that he had training and he couldn't get off, which I am I was in the army and like, if you have a court case and it was the murder of your wife, they would definitely give you time off to go face the person who murdered your wife. But he didn't go. But in 2019, and this is in Virginia. Kathleen Doyle was in Virginia, so Dennis Bowman must have traveled to Virginia. He was convicted in 2019 for two life sentences. So Dennis Bowman was already inside the prison system serving, and when he was convicted, he came clean and he basically said, I have to tell you about something else that happened because I guess he figured that like, you know, I'm not ever getting out. I don't know why he came clean about it, but I'm happy he did because this has been a cold case for almost 30 years. He said, you know, my adopted daughter, Andrea Bowman, I ended up killing her. And this is the story that he gave. He basically said that Andrea threatened to tell everybody that she was being molested by him and he hit her and she fell down the steps and she died. 
I don't know how much of that is true. It's kind of hard to push somebody down the steps and have them die. I feel like there was a little bit more, but what comes next is pretty heinous, like I said. So he had to shove her into a barrel. So he cut off her legs, he mutilated her body, he cut her into bits and pieces, he buried her in, her, in his own backyard. So when the police came looking for Andrea, she was there. She was just in the backyard. And it's kind of sad that like, you know, DNA evidence and like all the science they have now, they didn't, they couldn't use it. I mean, I don't know. You hear about the CSI crime effect, luminol and all that stuff, but that obviously doesn't, wasn't done. And so she was there. They, they didn't know she was there, and then when they moved, this is the part that gets kind of crazy, he ended up like digging her up, putting her, her remains in his vehicle, and then he took her body and buried it in their next house under a slab of concrete, which happens a lot. Like, there are a lot of people that are disposed under concrete. And when he was in prison, he basically told them what happened. He told them exactly where she was, which was... So Andrea was actually found at the 200th block of 136th Avenue of Monterey Township. And I think that was in the Algonan, Algonan, I can never say that right, Algonan, Michigan area. And that's actually where he was tried and the judge convicted him of second degree murder because he pleaded no contest and they gave him 35 years. And the judge was asked why they gave him 35 years and she said because if they would have gave him a life sentence, he would have been able to get like a certain amount and be able to go before a parole board. But he's already serving two life sentences in Virginia for Kathleen Doyle. So after all of that was done and said he was sent back to Virginia because that's where he has to serve his two life sentences and Andrea Bowman's skeleton remains are here in Michigan and her adopted mother is trying to now get custody of them so she can have her daughter back, which I hope she really does get that. And then something else that I forgot to leave out that I found very interesting and that kind of upsets me is Dennis Bowman's ex-wife. So Mrs. Dennis Bowman, she actually testified in court that Andrea came up to her and basically said, you know, I'm being molested by my stepdad and so it proves that the wife knew about it and I don't understand why she didn't tell the police. Maybe she did tell the police. I don't understand how it wasn't invest. I don't know. It was, it was the 80s, 89 and things just kind of weren't looked into like they are now. But finally, Andrea Bowman's skeleton remains were found. She's no longer a cold case. She had been marked as an endangered runaway for 30 years and she never ran away. She never ran away. She was always right where she was supposed to be. She was at home. And I just think it's kind of like crazy that she's in that video runaway train because like that was like a big part of my like teenage years, you know, any, any teenager that ever had any problems in their life or like, you know, I don't know, I ran away once or twice. So I always like heard that song in my head and they've got a picture of her in the video and I, and her birthday is my birthday and I just think, wow. So 30 years and she can be finally laid to rest. And I just thought it was a really important like story to tell because number one, if somebody tells you that they're being molested or they're scared to go home and you're a teacher, please do everything you can to like protect them. And number two, like I, I want to know why the wife didn't go to the police because I have a pretty good feeling that she knew what happened. Like how could she not have known what was happening? If Andrea told her that she was being molested, 
Was she not in the house when he killed her? These are questions I have. But that's my story and I just wanted to talk about it because there are so many missing children in the United States in the world and her her story deserved to be heard and I I hope you enjoyed it and found it informative. If you like my channel, think about subscribing, give me a thumbs up, tell me what you thought. Have an amazing day and I will too. And as always, stay spooky and stay safe. Bye.